The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Since its founding in 1775, the United States Navy has shouldered the gargantuan burden of protecting America's 95,000 miles of shoreline. It has built thousands of ships and deployed them in every major U.S. conflict. But when the explosions stop, often so does our attention to these loyal vessels. Since 1946, more than 1,000 of them have come to rest here in Sassoon Bay near Benicia, California, part of America's National Defense Reserve Fleet. The purpose of the reserve fleets are basically to moor vessels that are in non-retention status. In other words, they've reached the end of their useful life and they're awaiting disposal. Most of these ships were brought here after World War II and the Korean War, held on reserve for possible military reactivation or disposal. The U.S. Maritime Administration, or MARAD, part of the federal government's Department of Transportation, is responsible for them. At its largest, this fleet, which many call the Mothball Fleet, had more than 400 ships riding anchor here. Today, the 71 remaining ships are at the center of a different kind of battle. Those vessels have been there for, uh, in many cases, for decades, just rotting away. But people weren't really aware of, of the problem. You'd go by on the train or in your car and you'd see them sort of in the mist in the distance and they had kind of a romantic, ghostly look to them. But I don't think anybody understood the scope of the problem. The main problem seems to be the ship's exterior paint. For years, it's been peeling off and falling into the bay, literally tons of it. With time, the paint coatings on the vessels in a marine environment, especially vessels that aren't operational, the paint tends to weather. And we did have some in-house concern about what was going on with the paint coatings on the vessels. After the Contra Costa Times first raised the issue in 2006, Merad hired an Oakland engineering firm, r &M Environmental, to analyze the paint composition. What their analysis showed is that Surprise, surprise, these paints that were put on there to kill uh, life forms that would otherwise attach to the ships are toxic. These paints are red hot for heavy metals, far above uh, hazardous waste standards in the state of California. San Francisco Baykeeper is an environmental group that monitors pollution in San Francisco Bay. Jen Kovexis is one of their staff scientists. Heavy metals at um, different concentrations can be lethal to organisms. Um, they can impair uh, reproductive success of different organisms. Um, some of them are carcinogenic. There's some evidence that predators who take up uh, too much heavy metals have, have a poor ability to capture prey. It affects their growth. Preliminary results of the MARAD study showed that at least 20 tons of the reserve fleet's paint, filled with such toxics as lead, chromium, zinc, and copper, has fallen into the bay. And below the vessels, concentrations of heavy metals exceeding California's hazardous waste standards are found in the sediment, where they can be consumed by marine life, including fish that are eaten by humans. The marshlands around Susan Bay are nursery grounds for um, a wide range of listed and threatened species. As a nursery ground, it's also really important for young stages of organisms, which tend to be very vulnerable stages. So to be exposed to additional pollutants and contaminants is really worrisome. When compared to an EPA database that tracks pollution from factories, the fleet ranks as one of the largest water polluters in Northern California for zinc, lead, and other heavy metals. It's clear that the situation needs to be addressed. But how? Unsatisfied with Mirad's response to this question, three environmental groups turned to the courts. Natural Resources Defense Council, Arc Ecology and Baykeeper filed this lawsuit uh, in October of 2007. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, gathering information from the federal government, from the defendants. And um, there's a trial date that's been set for 2009. 
Mirad argues that the fleet is not the sole source of toxic metals in the bay. The agency contends that years of discharges from other sources like agriculture, factories, and urban runoff have contributed the bulk of pollution to the system. This is an area where it's the confluence of many different water bodies. There are refineries in the area. That, there's a naval weapons station around. So there's many contributors to the sediments in and around the fleet. You know, there are a number of refineries and heavy industry in the Bay Area, and in that area in particular. But those facilities are subject to permits. The ghost fleet in Sassoon Bay doesn't have any permits to discharge pollution at all. If a private person were engaging this kind of activity, it would clearly be against the law and they'd probably be criminally prosecuted. But for veterans like Paul Gomez of San Jose, there's even more at stake than the environment in this conflict. This is the battleship uh, Iowa, BB-61, and I served aboard her during the Korean War. It was a thrill to have gotten the duty that I did and to see all of this superstructure, computers, radars, and uh, all these big guns, it was awesome. The Iowa is said to be the most powerful capital ship ever launched. Active from 1943 through the 1980s, this 45,000 ton battleship could cruise at 33 knots, and each of her nine 16 inch guns could accurately fire 2,700 pound projectiles at targets up to 23 miles away. In World War II, the Iowa and her crew saw combat in the Marshall Islands, Truk, Saipan, and other flashpoints in the Pacific. If you were asked to ask me if it had a soul, my opinion is it does have a soul. And I think its soul consists of all of the men who served aboard her. Gomez and others feel there is one more opportunity for the USS Iowa to serve her country as a historic museum ship. But the cost of even minimal maintenance on a ship this size is astronomical. And as more time passes, their dream is deteriorating along with the rest of the ghost fleet. So for the ships that are still of value, I feel that uh, it's tough to see them amongst some of these other ships that are just absolutely rotting. I don't want that to happen to my Iowa. Some of the ships are really important in terms of the military history of, of the U.S. and you can't just leave a, a bit of your history to rot in some corner of your country and just like forget about them. If the military thinks they're valuable enough not to break them, then take care of them. For decades, the Maritime Administration has provided only minimal maintenance on the ships here, slated for scrapping. The agency has slowly been moving some of these ships out of Sassoon Bay for recycling. Currently, however, there are no ship dismantlers on the West Coast, so the vessels have to be towed more than 5,000 miles to Brownsville, Texas. This journey can cost taxpayers up to a million dollars per ship. But since January 2007, a new environmental issue, stopping the spread of invasive species, has ground even that ship movement to an indefinite halt. Because of uh, the National Invasive Species Act, we have a requirement uh, through the Coast Guard's implementing regs to that act that we have to clean the hulls in, in, a, in a regular time frame. Uh, so we started doing that in 2006. Before it travels to a different ecosystem, the Coast Guard requires that barnacles, crabs, and other species be removed from each ship's hull. Mirad officials were doing this, but according to Bruce Wolf, a top state water pollution official, during the cleaning process, some unwanted materials, including paint and chemical coatings, were being scraped into the bay. So we basically told them until they could demonstrate that they were collecting and controlling all that material that was coming off the holes during the hole cleaning that we would not allow them to do that. Merad officials claim that they can contain 90 percent of the toxic material and paint that comes off the holes during cleaning. But because of the water board's concern about the high level of metals that still would be falling in the water during cleaning, all hole treatment and ship removal have stopped probably another 15 to 17 ships could have been removed from this fleet alone 
if we did not have the the problem with the the impasse with the water board on the uh, on the subject of the hull cleaning. The obvious solution would be to break down and recycle the ships nearby, right? Well, it is a possibility. Historic Mare Island Naval Shipyard in Vallejo is a mere 15 miles from the fleet. At the shipyard, which closed in 1996, there are two dry docks and two men who are ready to get busy recycling these ships. But, like everything in this story, it's not as easy as it appears on the surface. The current bureaucracy and red tape that we are facing is the fact that these dry docks belong somewhat to Nolanar, somewhat to the city of Vallejo, and somewhat to the state of California. So all three people are having difficulty signing off on our operation and keep putting us in circles. What we really need is all the people to come together and agree that this is good for the environment and good for the bay and allow us to do our job. We know that by removing the boats that the estimated, I think, 50 tons that is of paint that remains on the boats won't get into the bay. And we feel that this is a significant enough source that removing it would, would be um, a, big, a big improvement for the environmental health of the bay. All sides, including Merad and the Water Board, agree that the Mare Island solution could work. But because of permitting, accessibility, and liability issues, it remains unclear when, or even if, that will happen. And when it does, it will still take at least seven years to recycle them all, during which time more pollution will be entering the bay. You know, we've appealed to the Water Board, we've appealed to the NRDC, to archaeology, to all the players that have uh, indicated uh, a concern with the fleet being here, and we've invited them for solutions. Solutions are not forthcoming, so, so that's a problem. Uh, I think it, it can and obviously will be resolved because these ships cannot sit here indefinitely, but I don't have a feeling for the, the timetable on that resolution. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.